welcome to this week's edition of Inter-University Debate. This week we have Busitema University, which belongs to Group F. As earlier stated in the previous weeks, the universities have been grouped in different groups. And this month of February, we are having universities from Group F. Last week we had Cavendish University, and this week we have Busitema University. I'm your moderator for today's debate. My name is Lake Jenna Pansi. I'm an advocate, a lecturer, and a tax consultant. So today, Busitema University is holding their internal debates. And after this, they will have the inter-university debates of, of Group F, and that will determine which university makes it to the quarterfinals. We already have universities that have already made it to the quarterfinals. We had Makere University and Kabale University from Group F. We had IUIU and Uganda Pentecostal University from Group B, and Makere University Business School and Kampala International University from Group C. So after holding their internal debates and also after the inter-university debates of Group F, Will Busitema University make it to the quarterfinals? We are yet to find out. So our topic for today is the National Development Plan 3 has identified five key growth drivers with the greatest multiplier effect as agriculture, tourism, minerals, oil and gas, infrastructure and human capital development. To what extent are our priorities aligned to the National Development Plan? So that is our topic for today, that our panelists for today are going to help us unpack. This is the 10th February, 2022. Our debate is running from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It is brought to you by Center for Constitutional Governance, that is CCG, and Civic Space TV. If it's your first time to watch this debate, make sure that you like this channel and also hit the notification button so that you're able to know every time we have this kind of engagement and so that you never miss. I'm going to introduce the debaters for today from Busitema University. Unlike the previous engagements where we have a panel of lawyers, today we have a panel of engineers and this is quite interesting. So I'm going to introduce uh, the panelists, starting with the first panelist, who is uh, Gabirano Titus, who is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in polymer, textile, and industrial engineering from Busitema University. Titus, you're welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ngabrano Titus, a third year student of polymer textile and industrial engineering, a debater by passion and a person passionate about national development in the context of uh, the five aspects that you're going to focus on today. We shall focus on the aspect of culture, tourism, oil and gas, infrastructural development, and I'm very certain that uh, by the time we leave this debate today, we as the youth and all the people listening out there will have learned something in alignment the National Development 3 in aspect of the four pillars that, are focused, that are being focused on in the debate today. We should also take note that the National Development 2 had its ups and downs. National Development Plan 1 also had its ups and downs that we seek to rectify in the due process to come. The National Development 3 plan comes in a period whereby we have been faced with very many COVID-related scenarios, very many issues have affected our economy, but we believe the National Development 3 will be able to tackle the aspect of agriculture, will also be able to tackle the aspect of tourism, tackle the aspect of oil and gas, which is very abundant in Hoima district for a period of more than 25 to 50 years, and also tackle the aspect of infrastructure, which is very, very demanding in our nation of Uganda at large. Therefore, I'm optimistic and certain that by the time we end today, we shall have learned something here and there and shall be a better, a better generation. Thank you very much. Back to you, Madam Moderator. Thank you so much, Titus. And uh, we can tell by the level of energy and uh, that we are going to have a very, very fruitful debate today. We are glad to have you. The second panelist for today is called Namuto C. Christine. She is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Water Resources Engineering from Busitema University. Christine, you're welcome. All right, thank you, Madam Moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I'm so glad to be one of the panelists from Busitema University. My name is Namtos Christine, a third year student pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Water Resources Engineering. Uh, today's topic uh, to be discussed is uh, uh, the National Development Plan, where we are focusing on uh, three multiply, sorry, five multiplier effects, that's agriculture, tourism, minerals, oil and gas, infrastructure and human capital development. And so, majorly we are looking at uh, NDP3, whereby we are going to look at uh, a number of things. We are looking at the five multiplier effect, but in relation to the past NDPs, uh, we know very well that we are focusing on vision 2040, which started from 2010, it will run up to 2040, those are 30 years. Uh, where we started has been split into uh, six phases, those are six plans, and so far we are on the third one, meaning we've moved halfway. So we, we expect by the end of this topic, we would have learned uh, everything to do what we are focusing in the third in our NDP3, and we shall look at NDP1, NDP2, and we see how we are achieving our vision 2040. Uh, possibly we realize agriculture, tourism, minerals, if they're boosted, then we can put our country at a better stand. Uh, we shall also see how we've shifted from our, our stand by 2010 up to where we are, and we also put in relation to where we are heading to. Uh, we shall look at uh, so far, the achievements we had, and we put those achievements we had, and so we can make sure we are moving to the next step. Otherwise, I'm so grateful to be part of this debate. Uh, NDP3, we shall also learn what NDP itself means. We know every nation has to have a development plan before you shift from where you are and you know where you're heading to. So we shall look at how far we've reached so far as a country. Thank you, I beg to submit. Thank you so much, Christine, for that introduction and opening statement. So our third panelist for today is called Iramo Alice Elizabeth. She is pursuing Bachelor of Science degree in Water Resources Engineering. Elizabeth, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator, for this opportunity. My name is Iramo Alice Elizabeth. I'm a first year student in Pasitema University, pursuing a bachelor's degree in water resources engineering. So today we are gathered to discuss NDP3 and the topic has already been read by the moderator. Allow me to introduce to you the vision of this NDP3. The vision is we want a transformed Ugandan society from a peasant to a modern and prosperous country within 30 years. So the NDP3 happens to be the third in a series of six NDPs and we also have its goal, which is to increase average household incomes and improve the quality of life of Ugandans. The theme of this national development goal is sustainable industrialization or inclusive growth, employment, and sustainable wealth creation. You realize that this theme happens to be one of the sustainable development goals. So tonight, we expect at the end of this to learn how, to, how the, the, the sectors of tourism, agriculture, minerals and oil and gas infrastructure, human capital development are aligned to this national development goal, how we are going to achieve our set targets, how the past has been achieved, how the goals have been set, the failures, the challenges they faced, and many other things. We also hope to, to see how good and how bad these strategies are, of which I expect, of which I, I know to a large extent, whatever they have chosen in these sectors is going to be achieved. Um, I happen to be one of the panelists for today's debate and I hope for the best. Thank you. Have you as a panelist, um, stop debater for this very interesting topic. So last but not least, uh, we have our fourth debater, Asem Pebwa Paul, who is pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in computer engineering. So Paul will be joining us in a bit and we, we will let him reintroduce himself when he joins us in this discussion. So as Alia stated, our topic for today is the National Development Plan 3 has identified five key growth drivers with the greatest multiplier effect as agriculture, tourism, 
minerals, oil and gas infrastructure and human capital development. To what extent are our priorities aligned to the National Development Plan? I know that this topic sounds a little technical, but our panelists for today will help us unpack this topic and make it as simple as possible for our viewers to understand. Now, to introduce this topic, in the middle of COVID-19 pandemic that has posed a lot of social and economic impacts in Uganda and in the world at large, Uganda launched the third National Development Plan, that is NDP3, that is for 2020 stroke 21, 2024 stroke 2025. Now, the mandate to come up with this national development plan lies with the National Planning Authority, as it is mandated under Section 71 of the National Planning Authority Act 2002, as its primary function to produce comprehensive and integrated development plans for the county elaborated in terms of perspective, vision, and the long-term and medium-term plans. So what is the current vision of Uganda? Uganda has vision 2040. Then as East African uh, community, we have the East African community vision 2050. Then as Africa, we have Africa agenda 2063. And as well, we have the sustainable development goals that we should not forget. So most importantly, this national development plan is supposed to be centered around Uganda vision 2040, which aims to transform the Ugandan society from a peasant to a modern and prosperous society. The question in this debate is, are our priorities aligned to this National Development Plan 3? That is the point in this debate where the panelists will come in. Now, first question in this debate to Titus, who is the first panelist for today. Now, Titus, make us understand what are the objectives of the National Development Plan 3? Okay, the, the objectives of the National Development Plan 1 is to, ensure, is to ensure that we hit and pass and uh, have a higher and reduce the poverty percentage to up to 18.7%. We want to reduce the unemployment rate in the country. Three, the, and the, another issue of the other objective of the National Development Plan 3 is to foster tourism in the nation and ensure that very many people are capable of visiting, are capable of visiting, a, are capable of visiting a country. Four, we also want to, the, another objective of the National Development Plan 3 is to find ways of fostering the oil and gas reserves that we have in the country and also make use of the various minerals we have in the nation. Five, National Development Plan 3 is also seeking to utilize the human capital in the nation to try to reduce the, on the vast numbers of human capital leaving the nation for greener pastures elsewhere. We also seek to, the also National Development Plan 3 seeks to make Uganda achieve middle income status by the year 2040. It also seeks to boost the agricultural input and output of the nation at large. Back to you, Madam Moderator. Uh, thank you so much, Titus, for bringing us up to speed with the objectives of National Development Plan 3. Now, moving to Christine. So, Christine, we understand that before we arrived at National Development Plan 3, we had National Development Plan 1 and 2. So, my question to you is how different is National Development Plan 3 from National Development Plan 2 and 1? Okay, as Christine gets ready, let me bring Elizabeth on board. So Elizabeth, how different is National Development Plan? Okay, I can see Christine is back. So, so Christine, my question to you is, how different is National Development Plan 3 from National Development Plan 1 and 2? Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. As uh, Alia talked about, as I said in my opening statement, uh, we are aiming at Vision 2040 but these phases have just been broken down. So literally there's no difference. It's just all about uh, transforming from one stage to another. So whereby we see NDP3 builds on the previous NDPs, but to fast track the realization of the results. So generally we, we have the 
we had the objectives for NDP one, then we came to the objectives of NDP two, whereby literally a number of things are carried on. Like for example, when we in NDP two, we were having to increase sustainable production, uh, productive and valuable addition in the key growth of opportunities, whereby we are also at as at the very point, we are looking at the human capital development. So it's all aiming at increasing people's standards of living. We as well had uh, enhancement of human capital development under the development at the NDP too. So strengthening the mechanisms for quality and effective, efficient service delivery. So generally speaking, we are shifting from one phase to another. We will carry on what has not worked out. So generally, there's nothing that you can ever run and you don't face challenges there's always that gap which is always created. So it's not really very different from others, but rather we carry on what has not worked out to the next plan, but each plan has its own objectives to achieve. And then secondly, we need to increase the role of the state, whereby when we look at NDP one and two, for that case, we're over-focusing on the private sector, but rather this time, if we engage the stakeholders as being the state, we shall realize a big transformation. We are aiming at that social economic transformation, which can be uh, achieved through engagement of all sectors. Talk about the private, talk about the state, the public. So we also look at um, increased investment in fundamentals, that's human capital, uh, transport, energy, that's putting ICT inclusive, which will help to bridge the gap which has been left in the previous NDPs. So to wrap up on that, these NDPs just build on the previous NDPs. When you have, when you are on third NDP, we have to put in consideration what really didn't work out in the previous NDPs. And we first focus on that before we can push ahead in relation to the lessons we learned, the achievements we've already taken up. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Okay, thank you, Christine. And I would like Elizabeth to start right from where, Steve, uh, where Christine stopped. So Elizabeth, my question to you is, what are some of the lessons that we learned from National Development Plan 2 that we addressed in National Development Plan 3? Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. As we know that these National Development Goals are in a series of six, running from 2010 to 2040. Each one is building on the other and the achievements from the past development goals and there are lessons that we learned from the first failures and we want to target them in the next. We are starting right from the theme, right from the mission of this current development goal, which is to increase the average household incomes and improve the quality of life of Ugandans. From the previous national development goal, we learned that the, the average household incomes per capita were very low. The GDP was very low. The, the revenue of the country through taxes was very low. The income inequality was very high. And also, the, the, there was a lot of underutilization of the resources in the country. Agriculture was subsistence, was subsistent, and therefore a lot of people were unemployed. So these are the things that the National Development Goal 3 is targeting. We are working on those basically. We want to see that a lot of the youth are engaged and are employed. We want to see that the income per capita has risen to a striking level. We want to see that the infrastructure has been developed. We want to see importation and ex importation of goods into our country has reduced. We want to target, we want to make sure that we are exporting much more than we are importing. We want to see that, that the revenue of our country has risen so that we can get the money to provide services, health services, to develop each and every sector of our economy. And those are the things basically that we are looking at in this development goal. From the previous development goal, we also see that a lot of corruption was involved and there are a lot of things were not fulfilled. So in this development goal, we are targeting to see that, that we have reduced the rate of corruption. We brought into focus each and everything that we want and align each and everything towards the development and to see to it that our mission, our vision, and each and everything that went in this development goal has been achieved. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. Okay, um, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, let me bring Titus back into the discussion. So Titus, um, we now have, we are now at the stage of NDP3. Uh, do you think Uganda has achieved some of the things in National Development Plan 1 and 2? 
Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. We have to acknowledge that uh, Uganda has achieved some of the things in National Development Plan 2 and 1, though there also have been challenges and lessons to learn from the two national development plans in the previous years. So uh, sustainably, we can state some of the few achievements that Uganda has achieved over the past national development two and one. One, we have been able to foster sustainable peace, security, and macroeconomic stability. The size of the economy has doubled from the, from the financial 2010 to financial 2018, 2019. We have also seen a rise in GDP per capita, that is the amount of money each Ugandan has. Let me say, so we are rising, almost reaching above the poverty line. We have seen an increase in domestic revenue. We have, uh, there have been very, very many achievements in the aspect of national development, national development plan two and one in relation to what Uganda has been able to achieve in the context of what is also yet to be achieved in national development plan three. We also acknowledge that, that uh, even the red network in the country has been fostered therefore you know, so that also affects the National Development Plan 3 directly as we are seeking to foster agriculture, tourism, oil and gas, infrastructure, and human capital development. We understand that the five pillars we are focusing on today can be best achieved if we have, if we build on the achievements of National Development Plan 2, such as road development. We have seen an increase in the number, in the number of uh, the number of connectivity. When I say connectivity, I mean there is a, there is there is, is ability to reach very many places due to due to the boost of uh, infrastructure, due to a boost in uh, how people get to reach one another in the various communities around them. We also have to acknowledge that the electricity in the, in the country has, has more than doubled. We get to realize that very many people are now connected in the national grid, even those not connected to the national grid, have access to electricity. We've also seen improved access to clean water all over the nation. And we believe this is all as a result of the National Development Plan too, as we seek to achieve Vision 2040, and as we as seek to achieve middle income status, which one of the challenges that National Development Plan 2 and 1 failed to achieve, but we're optimistic the National Development Plan 3 will be able to achieve in the next plan. Thank you very much. Back to you, Madam Moderator. Thank you so much, Titus. That was quite elaborate. Uh, I would like to move back to Christine. So Christine, let us specifically now talk about National Development Plan 3. Now, looking at National Development Plan 3, do you think that there are things that have been prioritized in National Development Plan 3 that shouldn't have been prioritized? All right, thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, looking at our National Development Plan, right away from NDP 1, going to phase 2, going to phase 3, we realize there are objectives that are always put on paper and uh, they are never achievable. So you get proprietors, people coming up and writing these, in, these objectives, but in reality, they are unachievable. So uh, that, that, that's why we're always having a gap. That's why we have a gap between NDP1 and NDP2, and literally there's again a, a gap between NDP2 and NDP3. But as a country, as stakeholders, as they put up anything, they always focus on how they will achieve it. So generally looking at the five multiplier uh, targets that we are having, there are some objectives that you look at and you feel like they're just in paper, but they can't be put down. For example, this time around, uh, our objectives are five, talking about the agriculture, talk about the tourism, the minerals, uh, oil and gas infrastructure, just targeting even oil. As a country, we began talking about oil years ago, but up to now we've not received even a single drop of oil and we haven't started utilizing any. So certain things are put on paper, but in reality, they're unachievable. Talk about agriculture, we are still re realizing that so many farmers are still undertaking subsistence farming, which really calls upon enough investment and real sensitization of citizens and making them aware of our goal, our vision of the 2040, whereby our goal of this plan is to increase household and improve the quality of life of Ugandans. But then how are we achieving this? How are we transforming it from a paper to the real, to, to reality? So that's how we shall look at the lessons which were carried on and we really put in place and we feel like how will this NDP3 also achieve that? objectives. So literally there's that gap whereby uh, we can talk about electricity where we, we, we at one time had 19 cents and by NDP3 we had achieved uh, around 9.3 
cents, but literally our major target is five cents. But Madam Moderator, if you look at this, how can you drop from a, right now a unit of electricity is expensive. We even have around it's 1,000 and even above. And we talk about a vision ending in 2025 when we are paying five cents. It's a little unrealistic whereby we shall always have those gaps that are always rising up. But generally, as all stakeholders are being involved, talk about the private, talk about the public, and every other person, every stakeholder, which are, we may realize some achievements of NDP3 so that we can minimize on the gap which, are, which will be carried on to NDP, uh, to the next NDP, say NDP4. I beg to submit. OK. OK, thank you, Christine. Um, Elizabeth, we have been listening to Christine who, who suggests that we have been setting unrealistic goals. So my question to you is, do you think that has an impact on the achievements of the National Development Plans? Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. I would like to confirm to you that yes, it definitely does have an impact on the National Development Plans. One, one, first of all, first and foremost, it's time wasting. Why are we setting goals that are unrealistic instead of setting things that are within our limits, some things that we can achieve in the set time and focus on other things as the future comes to pass. Instead of us wasting time, focusing on things that are unreachable, unattainable, unachievable, so first and foremost, I would like to say that it is a waste of time. Two, it is a waste of money. We are investing in these activities and we are taking them halfway. They are half-baked. And at the end of the day, we are going to put money into them and the burden comes back to us. We see that our debt is rising at a high. Our debt is rising highly and that is going to impact back to the citizens of the country whereby they're going to increase the tax rate and that again brings the income per capita to a lower level because families are strained, people are unemployed, but the taxes are high and that is what is causing all that. The other thing is it leads to corruption because, for example, we want to, we want to, to refine our own oil in like a period of time in that period of time we realized that we do not have the the labor the qualified labor to do that but we have set it that between 2020 between 2015 maybe and 2030 we want this to be done between 2015 maybe and 2018 we want this to be refined we don't have the labor we do not have the machinery and people are going to see that the money is redundant and not in use there is nowhere to place it they're going to end up they're going to end up swindling the funds that would have done something that is realistic and that is going to benefit people and it's, it's it's it ends up being diverted into things that are not realistic also on top of that i'm going to talk about like the tourism sector maybe we have set things that we want this and yet our infrastructure is not good enough to attract and to bring the tourists that we need a certain goals to be achieved to get the money that we need and I therefore support that we should the national development goals should be set within the time limit within the facilities within the the things that we have in our country and that will do us better than wasting time and doing things that are not attainable. Thank you. Okay thank you Elizabeth um, for that. Now moving to Titus let us move away from things that um, shouldn't have been prioritized. Let's look at the issues that have been prioritized in the National Development Plan 3. Do you think um, National Development Plan 3 is aligned to the priorities of this county? Thank you very much, Madam Moderator, and other people out there listening or watching from wherever you are. Now, the National Development Plan 3 is focusing on five priority areas, agriculture, tourism, oil and gas infrastructure, human capital development. Now, we as a nation, we have majority of our population, more than 70% being subsistence farmers. They farm food for eating that day and uh, they rarely sell that food for commercial use. Now, we have, we have our economy being a backbone of tourism priorities of our nation. Now, priorities of our nation right now, we believe agriculture is part of them, tourism is part of them, oil and gas is not necessarily part of them because one, oil and gas was part of National Development Plan 2, but wasn't achieved. And the most 
the most about oil and gas that we did not shift a step. Infrastructure is very necessary because we get to realize that for everything to flow in a nation, infrastructure has to be tick, it has to be okay, the roads have to be fine, the markets have to be okay, houses have to be in place. Now, human capital development. We get to realize that currently there is a uh, the human capital we have as a nation is sustainable enough and we need it as a country because we believe as a country you need a human workforce that is well qualified to do the available roles around the country and also capable of achieving very many things when we zero down to the priorities of our nation the priorities of a nation right now is to achieve middle income status have a stable and easy flow of economy and an easy flow of things be it security be it goods and all those things we get to realize that some of these things are not achieved through the five priority groups that the National Development Fund 3 is trying to focus on. Because we get to realize that oil and gas is something that was that was set to be having on Friday by 2021. We're in 2022, nothing has been done. We get to realize that some of these channels are channels that are carrying in a lot of money through corruption, breaking the backbone of more Uganda people in Montuawa. Maybe that National Development Plan 3 can achieve at least aspect of agriculture if we could focus on modernization of agriculture and forget the issue of us focusing on subsistence farming whereby people plant food for eating only, whereby we modernize agriculture, that is a serious priority of a nation. You get to realize that 50% of our GDP is generated from agriculture and also tourism. Tourism contributes a huge percentage of our GDP. Therefore, tourism is very key. But then we get to realize that the general image of a nation, the general perspective of how the treatment and flow things is done right now is backing us of tourism currently in the world we have the leading amount of gorillas in the entire world but people focus on going to a neighboring country rwanda because of the packaging of their materials they have like very few mountain gorillas in their country but then people focus on going to rwanda as compared to coming to uganda because packaging we get we to realize that what do we need as a nation we want to achieve middle income status we want to achieve a stable economy but these five priorities can achieve that, but oil and gas isn't supposed to be there. If we focus on things like agriculture, yes, if we focus on education as per se, because we believe and also get these people living education, sustainable jobs that can sustain them after living education, well and good. The human capital development is there, but it's not sustainable enough for people to compete in the outside world. Take an example of a low of a low courses. The low courses are very competitive. We have one of the best law firms in the entire car, in the entire world, but how well do we weigh out there? We are like uh, Bositima University, as, as, as an example, produce numerous engineers, numerous doctors year in, year out to give us sustainable human capital development. But then this human capital, after leaving their respective, they fail to get placements, they fail to get places to work. We can realize that the priorities of a nation is one, creating an equilibrium. We, we have to create a balance between the workforce, education force, and also the general overview of force. You can realize that we focus more on and have on failing to sustain our own economy and we are focusing a lot on the debt. You get to realize that the debt pattern is nowadays too, too much. And instead of us focusing on what is achievable, like agriculture and tourism, we get to focus on perfect goals like oil and gas, because even the oil in Hoima cannot sustain this nation for more than 50 years. Therefore, I believe oil and gas is far-fetched and it's supposed to be one of the priorities of NDP3, where you can focus on agriculture, tourism and infrastructure. Infrastructure is a very key building block because with good infrastructure, you achieve very many things in the process. I beg to submit, Madam Moderator. Okay, thank you, Titus, um, for your submission. So moving to Christine. So Christine, Titus seemed to suggest that yes, except for oil and gas, the rest of the issues in the National Development Plan 3 are aligned to our priorities as a country. My question to you is, do you share the same view? Wow, all right, Madam Moderator, thank you for uh, posing that question to me. I align with the, my colleague Titus in a way that it's really evident that with oil and gas production in the country, it has been stipulated ever since we began hearing about it up to date, it has not started uh, working out. Uh, but for other sectors, it's really also evident that at least there is a transformation, uh, that there is a lag that we haven't achieved it. For example, uh, we shall talk about uh, uh, looking generally about the peace in the, in the country. Uh, for peace and security, we realize that uh, our country has enjoyed uh, this privilege quite from the time we began in 2010 up to date. And it's evident that it will keep 
improving every day in and day out. And then when we look at uh, other things that uh, we've achieved as a country, we shall look at uh, the GDP per capita, which has grown. We had literally by 2012, 2013, where we had 844 USD. Uh, but right now, as we speak, uh, by the end of 2018, 2019, we had shoot to 878. So we realized there's a transformation in some priorities uh, other than us focusing on what has not worked out, uh, for instance, the oil and gas uh, production. Then we also look at the domestic revenue collection, which has increased from 5.02 trillion uh, by 2010-2011 to uh, Uganda currency, that's 16.359 trillion. Whereby we realize so many people are crying out, uh, there's tax on everything, uh, everything is being taxed, uh, online access, talk about the internet, Every commodity you can purchase, it has been taxed, but literally it's all for the betterment of our country. It's raising the revenue of the country. So it has been implemented rather than just being talked about. And uh, another thing we can talk about is the economy being expanded. So literally, there are some sectors which are not realistic, they have not worked out, but for the cause of the vision, we don't really need to blame the years we've moved so far. We know the vision is lying for 30 years, but we have to also appreciate the steps we've taken so far. We believe every 1,000 miles that with one step, and at least where we've reached, we should learn to appreciate at least where we've reached. Uh, I really concur with my brother, where he said that gas is still lagging, but at least there's a transformation in other sectors. I beg to submit. Okay, Christine, before... Um... Before I move to Elizabeth, I would like to just get this clarity from you uh, on a point that came from uh, Titus and has been carried forward by you. So are you, is, are you saying that since um, oil and gas has not worked out according to your submission, it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be in the National Development Plan 3 as a priority? All right, Madam Moderator, uh, for the objectives we've set, Literally, we should look for ways of uh, attaining what we've said. We cannot, we've just started our plan. This is just 2000, uh, 2021, 2022. Uh, this is 2022 right now. There's still a gap of fixing things. Uh, literally, when we look at the oil and gas, we cannot start making the gap as per now, like this is not working out, so we drop it off. Uh, we realize uh, we, uh, there are some countries which are not strategically blessed as the way Uganda is, but they're really thriving on other things. We, we have uh, oil and gas, which we can really also like try to boost it and can push our country to a better level. So we cannot start thinking of dropping it. We cannot count it as a gap, but rather uh, encouraging and uh, putting up every stakeholder, like we all push for it. As I said earlier, we have several bodies that can uh, implement these things. Talk about the private, talk about the public. Uh, everyone is really involved in attaining these goals. It's not the government, it's not one individual. It's Okay, let me move on to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, looking at National Development Plan 3, to what extent are our priorities aligned with National Development Plan 3? I beg that you pardon, to what extent are? Our priorities aligned to National Development Plan 3. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. I would like to say that it's to a greater extent that our, our priorities are aligned to National Development Plan 3. One, because tourism in its, in its nature is going to increase, is going to expose our country, first of all, to the outside world. It's going to woo investors into this country. It's, it's going to benefit us in a couple of ways. Because when these investors come into the country, first and foremost, they're going to create employment opportunities for the people, which is going to improve on their state of living because they're going to get employment opportunities and increase the GDP of the country, the income per capita. And in that sense, our national development goal would have been achieved. 
I'll talk also about agriculture, which happens to be the backbone of the economy of Uganda, and also one of the highest branches, that, that the highest sources of employment for people in this country. Agriculture in its state is going to create a lot of employment opportunities. It's going to boost the industrialization sector. It's going to also widen the, as, as our target is to improve on the import import substitution the exports that we want to export more than we import so agriculture is going to help us the infrastructure if developed is going to also boost the agriculture it's going to ease the movement of the goods of the produce from the market areas to the gardens and vice versa so these 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 five sectors to me are to a greater extent save for oil and gas which which Simon said which Titus actually said does not concur with, I would like to, I would like to side with Titus. I believe the oil and gas is quite a waste of time because it's not going to achieve, it's not going to give us as much as we would have expected to have gotten in this period of time. I would prefer that whatever has been put for oil and gas would be diverted to the agriculture sector, which is going to actually be one of the best solutions since it's great, it's the widest actually. So I believe if agriculture is commercialized, we are going to attain a lot of different things The revenue is going to increase and our objectives are going to be attained. I also believe that human capital development is key in this sector because there are a lot of people who have ideas, but they do not have the capital. If the government comes up with opportunities to lend people money for starting up businesses and they later refund, it would be a very good idea. So by 2025, we would have achieved a lot of these things if we are to put this in place. So it is to a greater extent and it is a very good move, I could say. Thank you so much. Uh, moving forward, I believe in two aspects. One, the oil and gas right about now is not is a perfect issue that isn't well achievable because of two scenarios. One, the world is going more of electronic and focusing on more of eco, eco fuels and being having a more eco-friendly environment. Therefore, us driving much on the oil and gas aspect is one, detrimental to society. Two, having side effects on on the entire ecosystem as a whole. Therefore, I believe that we should focus more on the agriculture, tourism, infrastructure, and human capital development. As uh, my previous panelist, Alice said, she stated it very clearly, if we could get ways of investing in this capital that we already have, if we can invest more on the people that are already existing, if we could give them more roles, if we could make them, if we could make them more empowered so that we can have, so, so that we can have so that you can have a more achievable, a more achievable society, so that you can have more attainable goals, then we believe NDP3 is more achievable. Priorities of the country right now are focused on achieving middle income status by that 2025, that has stated in uh, in some of the in, in some of the national in the, in the national plan by the National Planning Authority. We are planning to make sure that we have very many majority of the guns above the poverty line and we move from substance, subsistence farming to modernized agriculture. Now those are more practical and achievable things as compared to focusing on oil and gas in Hoima, which should have been achieved in National Development Plan 2, but isn't achieved due to due to unavoidable circumstances. Also, we believe that if the National Development Plan 3 is well structured and the people in the country are given equal distribution of resources in all aspects, then I am certain and optimistic that if the agricultural sector is given a substantial cut in the national budget for the next five years and the tourism community is given a substantial amount of the budget in the next five years, then you can achieve National Development Plan 3. We are focused very much a lot of money on infrastructure, but we believe that there's no direct proportionality. When I say direct proportionality, I mean the money invested to the infrastructure being set up. We get realize that, yes, we shall have new infrastructure at the end of the five years, but is the new infrastructure directly proportional to the amount of money invested in the infrastructure? Therefore, I'm, therefore I believe that, I believe that we, I believe that the amount of money invested should be directly proportional to the amount of resources achieved. If let me say we invest 5 million USD in infrastructure, can you receive infrastructure worth 5 million US dollars? If we currently have programs like uh, Mioga, we currently have programs like uh, circles and all those things, do we believe that the human capital is, a, is, a, is achieving all these things 
all these things through these national programs. Therefore, National Development Plan 3 is very attainable and very achievable, but it should focus on the practicability and the workability of some of these factors. That's why we shall focus on mostly agriculture, tourism, infrastructure, human capital development, which has partially been achieved, but then there is no equal, develop, equal distribution of resources to all personnel in the human capital development aspect. You get realized that there is favoritism, tribalism, nepotism, and all these other aspects affecting the distribution of available funds to the respective people. Yes, and this note, therefore, that we shall acknowledge that if there is a knowledge or money affiliated to a certain resource, the new as a country can achieve National Development Plan 3 before the five years elapse as stipulated in the National Development Plan 3 changes in 2025, 2026, 2025. So we believe that this can be achieved if money appropriated for these activities is actually done. I beg to ask my other panelist, Christine, to add on the issue of the National Development Plan 3 as we proceed. Thank you very much. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you, Titus. Um, probably as we still wait for our moderator, uh, we are currently having NDP3 that is uh, running, but majorly we should look at the gap which was there uh, between the NDP2 to, uh, to NDP3. Currently, I may call it maybe the challenges which have been, be, which have caused the loophole or which has caused that gap, whereby we can look at the, as I talked earlier, we shall look at the uh, persistent vulnerabilities and wide regional disparities in attaining the required poverty. We had not talked about this, but in the country as for per Uganda, as per Uganda, we are really facing that inequality. Uh, where you find a region is, much better than another region, take for instance, of course we have our Eastern, Western, the Northern, the Central, but we always realize that imbalance that has really caused uh, a lag behind. We are focusing on NDP3 as a country, as a whole, but then you realize some regions are far ahead and then others are behind. So it really generates a gap. And if it's not looked into, it might as well cause uh, a setback in our NDP3. And possibly we can look at the weak accountability for results in the public service, whereby we've really had this challenge for long, whereby you find uh, a project is being put up, but then having like uh, forces which can look for that sincere accountability, which is never there in place, has made people so reluctant. Uh, let's take for instance, uh, we want to construct a road as a project. But if we don't have that sincere accountability, someone is allocated like 100 million to, to run that project and there is no serious supervision. Someone will just do any work, he will just do the work at, any, at, at his own wish. And whereby in the country we are facing that problem of uh, accountability. Whereby I saw in Vlambuli district, uh, of recent, some contractor was given a contract of work, making a bridge. But unfortunately, this person comes up instead of using concrete and still just used wood and got maram and poured, then brought some small concrete and put on top the maram. So which at a later stage, when the, it was something like a strike from the stakeholders, the, 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 the residents, who were concerned the bridge was so poor. That's when we realized that there's always that weak accountability. There's no one who can come from up even to supervise and follow up on the accountability status. So if we don't look at such issues, we shall still carry on the gap to the next NDP, which may land us behind in achieving our vision of 2040. And then possibly we are having also a large youth full population consisting of 23% of the population. We look at this population of the youth, Uganda is privileged. We have a population of youth being higher than any other population. Talk about the adults. But when you have a higher population of youth, it's advantageous and at the same time, it's dangerous to a country. Uh, how is it important or advantageous? We are assured of the labor force. Youth, we are energetic, we are unstoppable, we can really conquer everything, provided we are being guided. But uh, where we turn out to being a disadvantage is uh, where we are misguided. We don't have, uh, majorly it's termed as, uh, increasing unemployment, sorry, limitation of investment capital. A youth has an idea, 
or rather has been pushed on maybe to do something, but is in lack of money, lack of funds to move out and uh, step out to do uh, the intended vision. So we look at our population of the youth being high, but rather how are we working on that towards attaining our NDP3? If it's not being looked into, then uh, that's when we shall realize uh, we shall have uh, violence, the riots talk about when it comes to anything political, then the country will always be rioting because the youth are many, they are energetic, but then they are, they are misguiding their efforts. And then we shall also look at um, electricity. Uh, thanks to the government of recent, we, we had an installation of uh, electricity here in Busitema, that's a four megawatt uh, project. But still, as we are looking at uh, promoting the electricity, we realize there's still high cost. Uh, when you look at the West Nile, you realize they, are power, they, they literally don't have power in some regions. We still have regions in Uganda which don't have power. So there's that imbalance already that will really lag us behind from attaining what we want. As I said earlier, we are targeting uh, per unit of electricity. But then how are we working towards that? We are the ones who, we are the mothers of electricity. We have all the available conditions of producing electricity. We have now, we have enough dams that have been put up and we have hydropower running. But then we still have that gap that electricity is expensive, which should be really looked into because we have so many sectors, almost uh, 50, over 50% 50 of uh, sectors depend on, depend on electricity. Talk about agriculture, talk, uh, talk about industrialization. So literally it should be looked into seriously uh, to see that those costs come down. Yeah, and then another thing that we should really look at is the concurrent prioritization. We've talked about infrastructure, we've talked about tourism, we've talked about all those uh, priorities should be put on the front line concurrently. Because when you aid one, the other one is also being aided. But if you lag one behind, it will affect the other, which will really make us not to attain our goals. So that inequality should be fought seriously, yeah, in terms of concurrent prioritization. Or maybe I can pose a mic to another panelist. I beg to submit. Okay, um, thank you so much, uh, Christine. I would like to get back to Titus. Titus, my question to you is, if you were put in a position of authority, what would you prioritize in a national development plan at this time? Uh, your question was, what would I prioritize in a national development plan at this time? Yes, at That's this time. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. First and foremost, before you prioritize anything, there has to be adequate and equal flow of resources and have something, sub something sustainable and achievable. Before I would even prioritize anything, I would first work on the biggest issue affecting our nation and was one of the challenges faced by National Development Plan two as the prevalence of corruption, weakness, one was prevalence in corruption and two, the weakness in system and gaps. Even though I was in a position of leadership, I would not be able to prioritize anything. I would be able to prioritize things, yes, but in the systems, there are very many leadership gaps and the prevalence of corruption. But making an ideal, something which wasn't, which is something ideal, I would prioritize two very key aspects. One is agriculture and two is tourism. By prioritizing this, prioritizing infrastructure indirectly, and I'm also prioritizing human capital development directly, but I'll focus mostly on agriculture and tourism because of two aspects. One, currently in Uganda, most of us are farmers and we mostly, de mostly depend on farmers, but we are still using the backward approach, using a who is not backward, but then how do you process that, those products? I'm not saying that we should add more, uh, more additives to products, no, that is not healthy, but we can sell our goods the way they are. We can package them in a way that is appeasing to the eye. We get to realize that you'll buy food in a certain downtown at 2.5, I buy the same food, let me say at Cafe Javas at 25,000. Now the difference in those two isn't the kind of food, but it's in your buying location. Therefore, I believe I will prioritize agriculture. When I prioritize agriculture, I'm prioritizing infrastructure in that aspect that one, I'll be building roads, two, building markets, three, making everything as accessible to, to, to all the Ugandans. But all of this lies on very two key things. 
reduction in the prevalence of corruption. I'm this kind of person who's a realist that I believe that corruption cannot be ruled out, but then we can reduce it. We can have sustainable theft. Stop, I could stop. Let us reduce on these things whereby people steal abnormally. Two, the systems in our country are very, very broken. But I believe in an ideal world, I will prioritize agriculture and also to tourism. When I talk of tourism, I'm talking the aspect that the game parks are there. We have the animals, we have the birds, we have the people. But then the question is, how are we utilizing these resources? We are one of the we are one of the most hospitable nations in the entire world, world over. Then how are we utilizing our resources so that we can market ourselves one well to the outside world and make it more achievable and more appreciated to the world. So I would primarily focus on two things, one agriculture and two tourism, as I'm hitting on the point of us achieving when they come to us by the end of, uh, by the end of 2025, and also making sure that our infrastructure, infrastructure develops naturally if you focus on agriculture and tourism. Those are things that are embedded in the other two aspects. Human capital development is something very, very crucial that I would put a lot of emphasis in. We are having a population of over 70% under the age of 35, but then how we, embracing, how making these people love their nation, how making these people embrace their country as a whole. Therefore, if we have adequate utilization of resources, if we have if we have all systems doing their job right, then I'm very certain I would focus on three key factors, agriculture, tourism, and human capital development. Infrastructure comes naturally if you focus on agriculture and tourism. I beg to submit back to moderator. Okay, so if, if Titus was in position of authority, he would prioritize to agriculture, tourism, and human capital. So, Christine, I would like to ask the same question to you. If you were in a position of authority, what would you prioritize for this country at this point in time? All right. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, just as my colleague just said, literally in the, everything that we do, we need to always prioritize. Uh, looking at the basis of the time frame and looking at the funds which are available at the moment, we need to prioritize. But uh, as he said, prioritizing tourism and agriculture, he really submitted well as to why he would choose that. As to me, I still carry on that. Uh, we should do prioritize based on those factors available. But uh, one of the lessons that we learned from um, NDP1 and NDP2 was the need to balance social and infrastructure spending to achieve uh, better development results, that is faster growth by concurrent prioritization. Uh, if you really leave one, uh, one, one cofactor behind, it may really, you may achieve that, but then you're lagging behind in some one region. Uh, let's say if you want to achieve tourism and you're focusing on tourism, but then you leave behind the issue of, two, of infrastructure development, it may affect in one way or the other. You've boosted the other side where our tourists will come and uh, link up from and have the good cinema, but then how are they reaching that side? Talk about the roads, uh, talk about everything to do with the transport means, of course. So at one point we are prioritizing, but we should also put on the front line uh, those uh, those factors, uh, sorry, those the uh, multiplier effects that work that work hand in hand. There are some effects that you cannot you cannot work on one and you leave behind the other. So as we look at let's say industrialization, agriculture, we want we are promoting agriculture from subsistence to modern farming. Uh, we want to promote um, agro processing. Talk about agro industrialization. We really need to work some things hand in hand. Prioritization pushes us at a promising stage of achieving uh, at least a goal, other than wanting to hit everything at once. But rather, when you work the things currently, you invest money at the same time, you realize better achievements, you, actually, you realize great achievement. Uh, so pre uh, preliminary, as I speak, we can say we are going to prioritize, but then, we should also put on the front line, there are some uh, cofactors, there are some multiplier effects that you cannot work on one at one point. So as we talk about increasing agriculture, increasing the tourism, we should also look at infrastructure at the same time. We should also consider the human capital, like how are, how are we developing that? So prioritizing, we cannot focus on two sectors as a whole, 
because one some work hand in hand. Maybe there's more question on that, but I beg to submit. Okay, thank you, Christine. Now moving to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, agriculture is at the center of everything. We have seen it has been prioritized. And uh, as you have heard from Titus and Christine, even if they were in position of authority at this point, they would still as well prioritize agriculture. Now, my question to you is, how do we get the youth to get interested in agriculture? Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. I think the youth will get interested in agriculture if it is commercialized. The youth are targeting money. The youth want to survive. So if the agriculture is commercialized, they know that it's going to give them the money that they need to do each and everything that they want. So the youth will be in involved in agriculture. So I think that is a very good point. It should be commercialized. Also, we should focus on agro-industrialization. These agricultural products should be processed from within. This will help create employment opportunities for the youth, not only directly in the gardens where agriculture is actually taking place. It's going to help them in that they will be employed, that those people who do not want to touch dirty things. So those kind of people will be employed in the industries where these activities are taking place. Also, these youth, can be attracted to agriculture if it is majorly based okay if the output is mainly for export if the output is mainly for export this produce is targeting the the people that are out so these youth most of them want to associate and build their social capital so with this they are able to interact with people outside the country and this can be a way to, good, to make agriculture better. Also, a minimum and maximum price for these agriculture products should be set. There is a tendency of people growing maize and then they tell you a, kilo, a kilogram is going for 300 shillings. Honestly, is that good? So they do not want to involve in such things. A minimum price should be set, a maximum price should be set. This is going to protect both the consumers and the producers of these products. In that I know I am going to grow this and I'm selling it at this price, I am getting this out of this. Also, we are going to make it, we are going to involve, um, we want to make proper yields, yields that are going to grow faster in a shorter period of time. These are improved varieties of crops that I know within a month I am going to harvest this quantity. I am going to sell it off and my turn up, my turn up rate is going to be so good in that I know that in 12 months, in every month, I am getting about 400 US dollars from my produce. So these are the things that the government should involve in, things that are going to profit people and the youth will definitely engage in this. And since agriculture is what one of the widest and the broadest and the best multiplier effects, the rest will fall in place. Tourism will fall in place. And the infrastructure development will fall in place. Human development capital will fall in place only and only if we boost the agriculture sector. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. Okay, uh, moving to Titus. So Titus, let's talk about COVID-19. So the NDP, NDP3 was launched amidst COVID-19. And you know, COVID-19 presented a lot of uh, social and economic problems that sprang from, from COVID-19 and also from the effect of the lockdown. My question to you is, has NDP3 addressed the social economic effects of COVID-19? and uh, how has it been addressed by NDP3? Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. Uh, I believe NDP3 as NDP3 was not planned to happen in COVID-19 and the National Planning Authority did not provide for that adjustment. We get to realize that uh, we as a nation, very many, the very many things that were brought about by COVID-19 are examples of loss of jobs, uh, we lost lives here and there. That COVID-19 pandemic as a whole exposed the entire system of a nation at large. Now, NDP3 having come at a time whereby we're in uh, the heat of the peak of the pandemic, it was supposed to solve some of our social economic problems. Talk about uh, 
yes, people are socializing, yes, amongst family members, but then there's not, there's not that social interaction amongst people out there and also the economic problem because we saw our economy drop during COVID-19. But I feel NDP3 is not addressing these issues. We realize our priority as a nation is to grow. Now, the planners of NDP3, in my perception, that is personally, I believe did not accommodate the aspect of effects of COVID-19 and how we could uh, evolve from the COVID-19 in, uh, in the aspect of NDP3. I believe the National Development Plan 3, the way it is, was it was supposed to be by the National Planning Authority and it wasn't adjusted to encompass one, effects of COVID-19, two, social economic factors, three, how exposed our system was. My belief, some of the things that NDP3 should also have focused on was find ways of utilizing the amount of money received from the donors, World Health Organization, IMF, and the World Bank, so that it can be used one to rebuild our economy. So yes, by you saying agriculture and tourism in a period of crisis where we are still battling lockdowns is worrying. I feel we could also focus on the human capital development and focus on in-house development because tourism, yes, is generative of a lot of capital, and you also have Ugandans who tour. But then there is that foreign tourism that generates the most income. So I feel NDP3 wasn't direct. The culture aspect, yes, is OK. But then the packaging of NDP3 wasn't brought about in the aspect of combating the social economic crisis brought about by. So I know some of these factors, priorities, some of these issues, social economic, are hidden in tourism and culture and all that. But then the entire package of the NDP3, in my perspective, does not necessarily give us clear solutions and cut solutions to social economic factors caused by COVID 19. I beg to submit. Moving to Christine. So, Christine, um, our citizens and viewers out there might be wondering how citizens get involved in formulation of the National Development Plan 3. And uh, I would like you to educate us how the citizens themselves can get involved in the formulation of this National Development Plan, this National Development Plans, because they, 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 they set our priorities straight as a county. So how do citizens get involved? Uh, once again, back, um, as you've just uh, posed the question, how the stakeholders, let's say the public, can get uh, involved. Literally, uh, it's a call to everyone to stand up for the achievement of our vision. And as the goal states uh, for our NDP3, it's clear that uh, the goal of, it's all about increasing household and improvement of the quality of life of Ugandans. But then it's, everyone's involvement and participation uh, to attaining this. As I stated uh, a few minutes ago, I'll break this down to uh, a, real, a literal example, whereby uh, a project was set up in one of the districts way back during COVID, and uh, the engineer was supposed to put up a bridge on a river. Unfortunately, for all the money he was giving, he just ended up bringing trees putting on a bridge and brought soil, then on top put maram. And later when they, they, were, they were doing like uh, an installation or rather handing it over, it was realized it wasn't supposed to be so. It was a concern of the um, citizens who stood up and they were like, no, this road is worse than even before. So it really showed that when the people were involved and pushed on for the best, is when we realize the real truth. So it calls upon everyone to participate, be it the private, be it every Ugandan, it's every person's responsibility uh, towards achieving the goals. Whereby we shall see, talk about agriculture, it's still us, the citizens, who are going to push on for this. We are the ones to carry on the activities still. So it's all about sensitization, whereby we call upon that the sensitization program to run. I thank God right now we have civic education, which is moving. Uh, I can send my gratitude to CCG, whereby the youth and other people, every stage of life, everyone is being educated about a civilization. So everyone's mind is getting opened about everyone's rights and responsibilities in our country. So these plans cannot be achieved 
by one individual. They cannot be achieved by one sector, but rather all of us being involved, the government, citizens, the private, everyone is called upon. So awareness and that sensitization should be multiplied even further. And us as debaters and other people we come across, we should really encourage ourselves uh, to step forward for the Vision 2040. Uh, thank you, Jenna. Okay, um, thank you, Christine. Um, moving to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, when you look at the National Development Plan 3, what opportunities do you think the youth have with National Development Plan 3? Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. So looking at National Development Plan 3, I'm looking at the goals and the objectives. And I would like to say that the youth actually have a lot, a lot to gain from this National Development Plan. One of the things I have to say is that this National Development Plan is focusing on human capital development. I would like to say that at this moment, most of the youth need capital to set up their businesses. Most of them have finished studies but do not have what to do. This is where the National Development Plan comes in to help them out. They, they can be able to get loans, they can be able to get capital in each and every form, set up their businesses, gain the profit, pay back, and that will be a foundation for each and everything to be achieved. Also, I would like to look at the tourism sector. The youth can gain employment opportunities. They should embrace this opportunity, get employed, get the money, improve the, per cap the income per capita. The GDP will definitely be improved in this case. Also, in the objectives of this national development plan, they were looking at strengthening the private sector to create jobs. So this will definitely benefit the youth in many ways. The, 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 they also want to enhance the productivity and social well-being of the population. So the youth can take this opportunity. The social well-being, everything is at peace. We have the services at our disposal. The health services are good. The infrastructure is good. The, the, the tourism sector is boosted. Everything is in place. And all this will lead to peace and stability. And each and everything will be improved. I'm also looking at an objective of consolidating and increasing the stock and quality of the productive infrastructure that still goes back to the infrastructure, enhancing value addition in key growth opportunities. This national development goal is basically is basically targeting and improving the agriculture produce. We want it processed the oils and the minerals, we want them refined before exporting. So these youth are likely to get much more than they would have gotten if these things were exported without being processed, without being refined. So you find that if they were going to sell the mangoes at 2,000, 3,000, 30,000 per bag, if they are processed and they're making, they're making maybe flour out of the maize, they're making tongue out of the, of the mangoes, you realize that the, the income is going to be increased and each and everything is going to be well, when the income is increased, the tax they pay their taxes in time. The government is able to to provide the services in time, and everything will be good. So this national development plan is really good for the youth, and I encourage all the youth out there let's embrace this opportunity. Let's participate in this, and everything will be well. Thank you so much, Madam. Okay. Um. Then let me bring Titus um into the discussion. So Titus, to what extent does Uganda respect what it is sets out in the National Development Plan? Uh, what do you mean uh, respect? I uh, not aspect of respect are uh, we talking about? To what extent does Uganda as a country implement, if I may use another term, what is in the National Development Plan? Okay, so Uganda as a country, when it comes to aspect of implementation, I feel the country doesn't fully implement what it sets out to achieve. If, uh, if you look at the programs that the National Development Plan has set out for, for let me say, for let me say the National Development Plan 3, for example, energy development, negative transformation, sustainable urban mineral development and sustainable development of petroleum, you get realize that most of the things are not achieved. Uh, to what extent do they implement? Uh, I feel the level of implementation is very low. I feel some of the achievements on NDP2 
would have better achievements if implementation was more adequate. Now, when you're implementing any activity, it works two way. One, you have to have the workforce, and two, resources have to be available for you to be able to implement what you have set out to achieve. For the for the for Uganda as a nation, NDP3 as per se has will have very, very many issues affiliated to it because one, the direct proportionality of resources, other resources allocated to these things, agriculture, tourism, and the rest, will stipulated to achieve them. Is the personnel necessary for achieving these things really the right personnel? Because it doesn't make sense for you to hire an economist, probably, to run an engineering factory. It doesn't make sense for you to hire an engineer to run Bank of Uganda. So you can realize that when we have the wrong personnel doing the wrong roles, we also have the resources needed to achieve some of these things are either not adequate or they're not substantial enough for us to achieve some of these things. Therefore, I believe the level of implementation of NDP3 will be very, very low due to the aspect of one, the right personnel to achieve these things, and two, the amount of resources affiliated to these things. Is, that, is it the right amount of resources? Are resources the right ones? Are we really setting out to achieve these things with the right amount of resources? Is the government really investing in resources to make sure they achieve these things? Is the implementation flow there? Two, also the structures necessary to implement these things are not well stipulated. You get to realize that there is no adequate flow structure for me to achieve an agricultural outcome, for me to achieve a tourism outcome, for me to probably maybe achieve oil and gas as an outcome as a priority in NDP3. So we therefore ask ourselves the question is, are the structures there? No, there's a huge gap between the structures. Is the money really directly proportional to what we set out to achieve? Maybe, maybe not. It's dependent on the national budget of that year. And also, is the workforce in that area the right workforce? In most cases, it is a no. So we get to realize the level of implementation in most cases will be up a lottery less than 60% or even in some scenarios less than 30%. So implementation for this NDP3 will be very, very disappointing for us due to those three factors. No structures, amount of resources, and the right workforce to do the job. Back to you, Madam Moderator. Okay, Titus, that, that sounds very worrying. But from an optimistic point of view, let me let me push this to Christine. So Christine, looking at NDP3 with an optimistic view from, from with a lot of hope, um, which stakeholders do you think the government should work with if uh, the government is to achieve our goals in National Development Plan 3? All right, sorry, Madam Moderator. Uh, to, the post, to the question you posed about uh, the stakeholders that, will be, that should be involved in ADP, NDP3, uh, this is precise. We should involve the NGOs, talk about the non uh, non-government organizations, which can really help in the, um, uh, overseeing this and rather also pushing on and helping in the, involve, in the investment of this, uh, of the goals. Then we also have the MPs, those political, the political wing, whereby these people are always on ground with the, the citizens, so they really know what is down, what's really on ground. So if we actively involve those, the political wing, talk about the member of parliament, uh, those area councillors, it will really boost our um, attaining of the vision 2040. And then uh, as well, we should involve the private sector as much as we can. Uh, whereby we, we shall have investors coming in. And if we have investors coming into the country, uh, there are so many attached advantages. Uh, one, we are assured of uh, boosting job opportunities in the country. So we, sh we ought not to leave out uh, the private sector as well. Then the, as well, uh, the citizens themselves in the country, whereby, as I said, we push on sensitization and making everyone aware of the responsibilities of each person as a citizen. It will really aid us and it will rush this uh, attainment of their goals. Then thirdly, we have the, the, uh, the, the wing which is in, in position of putting up these um, objectives. Yeah, as I said, uh, the objectives which are put in place and rather they end on paper and are not being implemented. 
So before any policy is being put up or any objective is put on the front line on paper, we should really look at how much we can really attain them. So those people who also put up those objectives, I uh, talk about the government, uh, they should really push on that. Sensitization, so everyone is really involved, individuals, private sector, the NGOs, the political wing, that's MPs, area councillors, they should all be directly involved or rather indirectly involved in the attainment of the vision 2040. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much, Christine. Uh, moving to Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, how best can Uganda achieve uh, its goals in the National Development Plan 3? Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. Um, Uganda can actually improve, one, by fighting corruption, because corruption is eating up, eating up, eating up each and every plan that we are laying out. That is one of the things that the government should focus on. All corrupt officials should be sued in the courts of law and made to pay back the money, not these things of just sending people to prison for like one year, two years, and they come back without giving us the money that they swindled. We need the money back because that is the money that we're going to use for implementing the plans. The next that the government can do is improving the peace and stability in the country. When, this is when the peace is good, the stability is good, tourists attracted into the country, everything is in place, the, industri the industrialization sector is boosted because there is no destruction that is taking place and each and everything is doing well. The third one, which is education, which I believe should have been among the five multiplier effects because this is one that is going to multiply far beyond the others that we're looking into. And it's even going to go far beyond into the, the sixth national development goal. The government should focus on the education sector and it should be more of a practical based education than a theory based education. The next one I believe is the government can come up with loans, youth loans, give the youth loans, let them boost up their, let them build their ideas, get their projects, set up these things and we shall shoot and reach our goal, we shall attain it. And I am basically looking at the youth because this is the largest population. This is the group of people and this is the potential that we have to harness in these young people. And by that, we also the, the government should focus on uh, import, import substitution, import substitution. What we would have gotten from out, the government should think of getting it from in. And this is going to do by these multiplier effects. I am so happy we have them here. And I believe when implemented, not just spoken, but when implemented, everything is going to be good. And by the time we go into the next development goal, we would have achieved more than 60% of this which will be a very, very good move. The government can also come up with agro-industrialization. This is which, what was earlier talked about. The, the industrial, the agricultural sector should be more of industrialized than just marketing the raw produce from the gardens. So basically with this, I believe we shall shoot up. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. Back to you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. We are moving towards the end of our debate for today. But before we move to closing remarks, I would like to get uh, Titus's take on this as well. So Titus, how best can Uganda achieve its goals in National Development Plan 3? Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. How best can we achieve? It's only one, the, the solution is very simple one can we have structures in place to achieve what we set out to achieve? I believe with a well-defined structure, you get to know whom to ask for results at the end of the day. If let me say, take an example of a school. If I'm a parent paying school fees for a child and then my child doesn't perform, since the school has a well-stipulated structure, I'll ask the class teacher why my child is not performing, who will refer me to the teacher specific teacher, to the child specific teacher. Therefore, the only way, and I am I'm very certain that the best way for us to achieve this is having proper structures in place. You know, if you have the proper structures in place, it's very easy for the national budget to appropriate you the necessary funds for you to achieve what you set out to achieve in National Development Plan 3. And I believe we as a nation, we have to learn from our mistakes. One of the mistakes we faced and challenges we faced from National Development 1 and 2 was the structures and the wide gas between the structures. Therefore, if we set out the structures well, and have our structures well organized. I'm very certain we shall achieve 
National Development Plan 3 to the fullest and even achieve more than we set out to expect. Back to you, Madam Moderator. Thank you so much, Titus. We, um, Christine and Elizabeth, we have had a very, very fruitful discussion today. Now we are moving to closing remarks. And let me start from Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, kindly give us your closing remarks. Thank you so much, Madam Moderator. From this fruitful discussion, as you have said, I, I believe that our, pro, our priorities are aligned to the NDP goals to a larger extent. All we have to do is to embrace this. Let's embrace these opportunities that have been given to us. Let's work hand in hand. Let's spread the gospel to other people. Let's make sure there is no corruption. There is no red tape. Let's not discourage the farmers. Let's work hand in hand and we shall achieve each and everything that we are set out for. Let these goals be implemented. Let's just not speak them, but let's act them. And with what I mentioned earlier before, with no corruption, with security, with peace and stability, with unity, with teamwork, all those things, we are set to achieve these goals. And by 2026, we would have achieved at least more than 90 percent, and everything is implemented. And I also encourage the government maybe to put more focus on the education sector, as I had earlier on mentioned. This education sector is if these ones are multiplier effects, then I don't know, it is. it goes far beyond that. Because with education, people are calm. People are, people have a lot of ideas in mind. We can come up with better things than these and put them on paper, implement them. We have a lot of qualified labor to achieve the things that we may not have achieved because of inadequate labor, inadequate machinery, low funds. With all these, I think it's the people, the brains that are, should be empowered for this course. And with that, I would be able to submit. Thank you for so much for your time. Thank you for each and everything. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, closing remark from Christine. All right. I'm so humbled to be part of this discussion of uh, the ongoing activity in the country, rather a program that's NDP. Uh, so majorly, my closing remark can be that uh, we should really work hand in hand towards achieving uh, our plan by focusing on the frame, the result frame of uh, NDP3, talk about the goal, the target, the objectives that have been put forward. So if we focus on our result frame, it will push us to measuring how far we've moved to assess our progress. So it calls upon all of us, uh, all sectors, all stakeholders towards fighting and seeing that we put uh, Vision 2040 on board. As, the, uh, as other panelists said, we should really focus on uh, fighting things which, can, which will end up creating the gap. Talk about the corruption, uh, talk about that uh, uncommitment, the, the, the uncommitted, the, 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 like lagging behind without focusing on the objectives. We should all be target workers towards Vision 2040 for, this, for the betterment of our country, betterment of the forthcoming generation that will come in to enjoy this. It's all about watering the trees which are in the forest at the, at the, at the moment. Uh, for that, we should just focus on our objectives and we see how we can narrow down the gap in unlike the past NDPs of like phase one and phase two. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Thank you so much, Christine. Um, let's get a um, closing remark from Titus. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. It has been a fruitful discussion that you've had today evening, and I'm very certain the people out there who have, uh, who, have, who have spared their time to listen to this have learned a bit from what you've shared as far as NDP3 is concerned. I'm very certain most of the people out there do not know what can be achieved, what, what is set out to be planned by the National Planning Authority, but I'm certain such engagements, we shall be able to learn more about NDP3. To the fellow youth out there, let us stop pointing fingers to the government and set out to achieve the achievable. There are very many programs aimed at benefiting the youth that most of us are so reluctant to set out for, and these are part of developing the nation as a whole and also developing you as a person. Therefore, I special, special request as a request to all youth to at least find ways of getting access to these resources because they benefit them. 
themselves, their well-being, and the well-being of a nation at large. Should also be noted that a special th a special thank to to CDC for sacrificing time, resources, and everything to set out to these things that you can be able to achieve. To my fellow panelists, thank you for sacrificing your time, and thank you, moderator, for being uh, very articulate and having us air out our views. I remain Gabriel Titus, a third-year student of Polymer Textile and Industrial Engineering at Busitama University. I beg to submit. Thank you, Titus. I would like to appreciate our dear panelists um, for sparing your time doing research and being with us for today's debate. We really appreciate. Today we had a panel of three uh, Gabriano Titus, um, who is pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Polymer Textile and Industrial Engineering from Bustema University. Our second panelist being Namutosi Christine, who is pursuing Bachelor of Science in Water Resources Engineering. And last but not least, we had Ivramu Alice Elizabeth, who is also pursuing Bachelor of Science in Water Resources Engineering. Thank you so much, our panelists, for being with us today. I would like to extend my gratitude to Center for Constitutional Governance and Civic Space TV for organizing these engagements. Every week, we bring universities here and they are able to debate. Our hope is that the policy makers watch these shows so that they are able to get the views of the young people, the, the, the young people, especially the ones at the university and their views are implemented. As well, the goal is that the different panelists, when they get out there and one day they become uh, policy makers, they are also able to implement the views that are on this show. So I would like to thank Center for Constitutional Governance and Civic Space TV so much for bringing this engagement to the young people at the university. I would like to also appreciate our viewers for watching and, and we hope that you were able to learn from the discussion which we had today and our topic was the National Development Plan 3 has identified five key growth drivers with the greatest multiplier effect as agriculture tourism, minerals, oil and gas, infrastructure, and human capital development. To what extent are our priorities aligned to the National Development Plan? So I'm glad that we were able to unpack this topic technical as it is, and we hope that uh, it has been able to, to make changes out there. Thank you so much for watching. Our debate ends here today. See you again next week, same time. Bye.